envisages the change that it brings is empowering the Attorney General to forward direct indictments in certain cases. Those types of cases have already been <coughs> given in the schedule. And this too, in cases where it creates public disquiet. Now, for instance, a case which creates uh, 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 concern among the public, like the recent Angulana murder case. There are the, when the Attorney General feels that a direct indictment is better, that uh, the discretion is conferred in the Attorney General to call for the file and file direct in indictments, cutting short the procedure that is entailed in the Criminal Procedure Code to uh, circumvent the summary procedure there. So therefore, <clears throat> this has been in operation for the last six years. The very fact that our government is only extending it for periods of two years as envisaged here is to see the efficacy and acceptability of such a procedure, not only on the, from the official bar and the judiciary side, also to see whether uh, our bar association, the private bar, is uh, satisfied with this procedure. What I feel is that <clears throat> we could certainly bring it as a permanent amendment into the Criminal Procedure Code after some discussion if this is, uh, this is acceptable to all the stakeholders. And this matter we can discuss later. But I feel that we need not have these temporary provisions being extended all the time. To, I, I, am, I must say that when this matter came up before cabinet, I was the minister in the then cabinet. There are several of us who were lawyer ministers in the cabinet who felt that uh, we would only, because what was sought to be done was to have a permanent feature, a permanent amendment to the Criminal Procedure Code. Then some of us felt that this must be properly bounced off with all the stakeholders before we bring these changes. And that is why we agreed, we finally amended it as a temporary provision for two years. So, once again, we are placing it and we can look at the way it functions. And after sufficient discussion, after sufficient discussion, we may consider to have this as a permanent feature of our Criminal Procedure Code. Then there has been, uh, I was told, a uh, certain issue relating to the gazetting of these uh, uh, regulations. That has, not regulation, the act itself, that has been done uh, well within the time as envisaged by the act in uh, section 7 subsection 2, which says that within one month prior to the expiration of the period of operation of this Act, that had been duly done, and <clears throat> we would wish that House approves this uh, uh, extension of the bill that we are seeking by this uh, by this Gazette notification. There has been similar uh, issues yesterday where uh, some members of the opposition were seeking to uh, make out that the government is intending to virtually declare military law all over the country by the Gazette notification that had been published in certain... No, 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 this is not a similar one. This is an ordinary law, ordinary law but I must very clearly say even yesterday's argument was quite misplaced because these are powers vested in the president and he has duly gazetted and again, the 6th of this month, uh, another gazette has been, uh, uh, yes, uh, gazette number 1722-17 of 6th September, the uh, calling upon the armed forces to maintain law and order and assist the police. And in extraordinary circumstances, this power is vested in 
the president to call upon the armed forces. In fact, I had a lengthy chat with the commander of the army this morning. And then he very specifically says that uh, uh, only upon the police calling upon the army to come and assist them, that they will come out, otherwise they are confined to barracks. You see, they have not been... That is for all the... In certain cases, certain cases, you must understand, in only in certain districts. No, no, no. No, no, no let me first finish. You, have, you can bring it up. You see, what has happened is, now, only, only in two districts we don't have permanent camps. Kurunagala and Kalutara. All the rest of the districts, there are permanent camps, and these armed forces are confined to the camps. Only when the police... Only when... No, no. No, 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 no. Only when, when the police calls upon... It is always... There is... No. A, a responsible government has to maintain law and order. We know but, but an anomalous situation, but a difficult situation was created with this Greece Yaka issue all over the country. And any responsible government will have to have... Will have to see law and order is enforced. No, a law and order is to be enforced, then only when the police can't curtail a situation. Now, for instance, for instance, I, I personally had to go. No, no, I had to personally go to certain areas. No, 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 let me, no, no. No, let me, let me come to that. No, 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 no. no. Now, then, um, the issue, issue of this, this particular issue was such a challenge and some of us ministers had to go personally to certain areas to calm the people down, to bring the issue under control and we saw how unruly the people were and for whatever reason, you know, the things had to be explained to them. It, we had to take a long time in, in trying to calm people down. This happened in Potuville and Kenya. I had to personally go with certain of my other colleagues to bring the situation under control. But then, but then, no, 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 I must categorically say, no, 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 I, no, no, there, there, are, there are certain people who are trying to create unnecessary trouble by uh, implicating the armed forces in this whole uh, issue. Armed forces are they, they are to maintain law and order and they are confined to the barracks and army commander confirms that they have they have uh, they have not been deployed outside unless unless the police is asking that asking for their assistance if they can't contain a situation if there is a riotous situation now you saw what happened in london a uh, few uh, a month ago parliament to ena paradipattinne police venota hamuda me den no, no, if there are army officers, they have been, they have been taken by trucks here and there. Maha Boru kya ne patta pal Boru. Mea tamai majam yaka. Shri kote majam yaka tamai mea. De patta kanava. Sir, Boru kya ne dene ne bese. According to the Savara Niyoke, Boru kya ne dene ne bese. Oh, order please. Let order please. Order please. Order by minister, you continue. Yeah. Yeah. Order please. Mr. Speaker, may I also order say please. this. Order please. Order by minister, you continue. May, may I? Order by member, sit down. No, Mr. Mr. Speaker. May Sit I also down. say very, very categorically, you see, the, you see the, the public security ordinance very clearly provides, even when the armed forces are called out, you see, I am in section 12, subsection 6, where any member of the Sri Lanka, uh, beg your pardon, Garu He 
You see, Mr. Speaker, you see, Public Security Ordinance provides very clearly. Azhar. Public Security Ordinance provides very clearly, even in the case order, where please. armed forces are called out to maintain public order, that they can't detain people. They have to hand over to the police. Even if people are arrested by the armed forces, the, the holding people in detention, armed forces cannot do. They have to, you see, they have to hand over to the police. And this, no, those are matters you can always canvass before courts. No, they, no, no, they are, no, some, now, they, now the issue.